Hey, Mark, this is Ryan with TrendLizard.com. I hope you're having a wonderful start to your week. Thanks for signing up at TrendLizard.com. Welcome to the community. Very happy to have you. I think you're going to like what you find. And uh, Elliott Wave is an awesome experience and an awesome journey that you're going on here. So uh, very excited. And uh, thanks again for signing up. So uh, we're going to take a look at three tickers uh, per your request. Uh, you had asked for futures contracts, ES, uh, gold, and oil. And as per our email, um, those are not covered on stockcharts.com, which is the charting website that we use. Uh, and you asked me to find the next best uh, option of those things to show you uh, the progression of what's going on in the Elliott Wave pattern on all three. So uh, this first chart, what we're taking a look at here is this is actually on tradingview.com, which is a different charting service. Great charting service, by the way, just not the one we use because uh, stock charts gives us a lot more annotation capabilities. But I wanted to show you here uh, what's going on. You can see there's a red line and then there's also the candlesticks here and you can see that they're basically doing the same thing over time they're tracking each other nearly perfectly the candlesticks are the S&P futures the red line shows the S&P 500 so you can see that they uh, move <clears throat> lockstep with one another and so <clears throat> I think by analyzing the S&P 500 uh, it'll show you exactly what you want to know regarding the Elliott wave pattern on the ES or the the e-mini futures on the S&P 500 so uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the S&P 500 to get started here. I started uh, this analysis as far back as our data goes, and it goes back to 1980. And uh, this does not show current day action, but I wanted to give you kind of a uh, context of what we're looking at as we go. So uh, since 1980, S&P 500 uh, has been in a massive uptrend. It's, it's only given us two things. It's given us a trendy five-wave move. Uh, and then a massive three-wave counter-trend pullback into the 2009 low. Obviously, this was a huge down move that took place over time, but when you look at it in its completion, all it is is a standard three-wave move. It just happened to play out on a very large time frame. So, And you can see it found support in this yellow Fibonacci support area. You will see these all over our charts uh, at trendlizard.com. And basically what these are is they just show the range of where uh, a stock, or in this case the S&P 500, has retraced a Fibonacci portion of the preceding five-wave up leg. So this five-wave up leg was retraced by nearly, uh, almost perfectly, a 61.8% retracement by this pullback, which is absolutely textbook, absolutely be beautiful stuff. And from there, the uptrend continued. So that's kind of the context going back to 2010. And then we'll zoom into more current time here. Here's that same three-wave pullback. And you can see what's happened off the 2009 low. Uh, we again embarked on a very large trendy five-wave move. And what we believe happened is that five-wave move ended in early 2018. Even though a new high was set in 2019 and 2020, uh, the pullback that followed fits to us as part of a larger counter-trend ABC pullback because nothing that happened within this action here is trendy to the upside. So um, that's what we think uh, took place. What we're looking at currently, and this this is kind of up for debate depending on who you ask in the Elliott Wave community, uh, we're working with the possibility that the large counter trend pullback completed and a new trendy up move has begun. So the al alternate to that would be that we're still in the five wave advance if you ignore the fact that this up leg in 2019 doesn't look like a trendy five wave move. I try not to ignore anything. It's a very clear three-wave move, which is why we think uh, this was all part of a larger ABC pullback and not the start, or, or not a fourth wave. So uh, that's <clears throat> that's kind of the larger time frame. It's obviously a very important question. It's one we can't answer right now to be absolutely certain that a five-wave move completed and an ABC pullback completed to give way to a new five-wave advance. Um, but that's our base case at the moment, and we will... Uh, drive in further from there. So uh, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit further. Um, this takes a look at that action off the 2020 low. So if we go back to this chart here, it's the advance that's taking place here, which we believe to be the start of a brand new uptrend. And what we see is we see a general five wave advance off of that low that was recorded in March. So if at any point the S&P 500 moves below 3200, that'll prove that a five wave move completed and now we are getting a larger counter trend pullback down into this uh, yellow Fibonacci support area before that uptrend continues. Um, so again, this is what we think is happening. 
Um, there's again, there's there's some different possibilities out there which make it a little bit confusing with what's going on. We'll take a look at one here. That's that a five wave move is not completing and that instead we're getting an extended five wave move. So this one and two here is just a smaller degree move within a larger five wave advance. Again, a little bit confusing. I apologize about that, but that's what the market is giving us currently. Um, again, the key level here to determine which is the case is 3200. So if at any point the S&P 500 moves below 3200, it confirms that this is in fact a completing five wave advance off of March's low and that a larger counter trend pullback is going to occur, which would be a larger second wave. So this would be wave one, then you'd get a second wave down before you start that third wave advance. If instead price stays above 3200 at all times, we'll have to entertain the possibility that we're in a much larger five wave advance that is not complete. Again, the key is 3200. So if we zoom in and look a little bit closer at what, what's happened off of June's low, here's what we have happening. It's almost a mini version of what took place off of March's low. You have a first, a second wave, a third, a fourth wave, and then a fifth wave up. A move below 3270 at any point on a near-term time frame indicates that a larger counter trend pullback has begun. So if 3270 gives, more than likely we're going to see 3200 give from there and you're going to get that larger pullback down into the 2650 to 2950 range before the next up leg begins. So <clears throat> it's a lot of information and I normally really don't like posting multiple possibilities. That's just what it is. If I gave you one and didn't mention the other, I wouldn't be doing you the right justice. Um, but I think that one takeaway on the S&P 500 is 3200. If price moves below there, you're getting that larger counter trend pullback. As long as that larger counter trend pullback stays above 2650, you're going to want to remain bearish, or excuse me, bullish, very much bullish, and expect uh, significantly higher prices from there. So if you own this guy, uh, you need to be bullish as long as it's trading above 3200. If you don't own it, um, you could consider giving it a little bit of time, see if it finds some resistance here at that 2020 high, and if price moves below 3200, then you know a larger counter trend pullback is underway. You wait for it to complete somewhere in this area, look for some strength, and that is your buying opportunity on the S&P 500 or the S&P minis, which I showed you uh, tracks pretty much the same way. So there's that one. Let's go ahead and move on to gold. Uh, this is the gold continuous contract that we're looking at here. This data goes back all the way back to 1980. Uh, it had a choppy, nasty move. Doesn't matter. None of this matters. All that matters is what's happened to the upside off of the 2001 low. And you can see what took place was a beautiful five-wave advance into the 2011 high, uh, at which point it gave us a counter-trend pullback. Um, we know it's a counter trend pullback because it's been completely retraced, right? Like it moved to a new high here. So this entire pullback has been completely retraced by this up move. So this is a bullish chart pattern. There's no two ways about it. We know in Elliott Wave, we're looking for five wave advances uh, to dictate the direction of the trend. So here's a five wave advance. That means the trend is up. And then we look for confirmation of that by looking for counter trend pullbacks. So this pullback we know is a counter trend move. The only conclusion that we can come to is that the trend is still up. So that's a very bullish thing, and that says the trend is still up and higher prices have to be expected. So let's go ahead and zoom in on some of this uh, more recent action to get more information here. Uh, this takes a little bit closer look at that pullback. Uh, it's kind of a funky move, uh, but at the end of the day, we already know it's a counter trend pullback, so we can, we can look at 20 different ways to label this. It really doesn't matter. It's over. We know that because it's been completely retraced um, so that is a bullish thing. So if we look at the advance off of that late 2015 low, uh, what we see is what looks like the start of a much larger five wave advance. So you have the first wave here, a second wave here, and then the progression of what should be a third wave advance, <clears throat> excuse me, to the upside from there. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit more here. Uh, we'll take a look at the action off the 2018 low. Uh, this is what looks to be that third wave advance again. Uh, if we take a step back, it's this third wave advance right here. Uh, here it is. It kind of breaks it down uh, as we see it. We see a nice five wave advance that completed in 2020, I believe February or March, can't remember. Uh, a large pullback that did test that Fibonacci support area. So you can see this working uh, in action here. And from there, uh, gold has really taken off to the upside. Uh, you have a nice first, second, third wave, and then I think it was just last week, gold had a big sell-off, um, but it's it's stabilizing now, trying to recover what we believe is a fourth wave pullback here that will continue higher 
and go from there. So we're looking again for this move off the 2018 low to give us a five wave advance. So here's the first wave, here's the second wave, and a third wave now, and that'll continue as we get a much larger five wave move uh, for gold. So let's go ahead and zoom in one more step here. This is just the advance off of March's low. Uh, and it shows you again why we think the current pullback that's taken place off of August high is just a fourth wave. So we have a first wave here, a second wave pullback, uh, a third wave up, and now we're getting a fourth wave pullback. So again, as long as it stays above 1820, that's the key here, uh, we're going to remain bullish on gold and expect significantly higher prices from here. Uh, it is important that it stays above 1820. If it moves below 1820 at any point in time, uh, then you kind of have some issues. Then this no longer looks like a trendy move that's in progress it opens the door to a much larger pullback so that is the stop level when trading gold okay so 1820 is very important to the upside 2010 if gold can move above 2010 it's going to confirm that this pullback in august is the counter trend move and that higher prices are coming so uh, if you own it you can own it as long as it's trading above 1820 uh, if you don't you can buy it on a move above 2010 it might give you a larger counter trend pullback before it heads higher um, but what can you do <clears throat> as long as it stays above 1820 in that scenario, you would still remain bullish. So there's that one. Let's go get on to your third uh, ticker that you sent me, and this one's oil. Uh, this is WTIC, the light crude oil continuous contract. So it was uh, incepted back in, at least my data goes back to 1983. Again, it starts with some choppy counter trend movement. Doesn't mean much to us. Doesn't really matter. Uh, off of that 1998 low you get a nice trendy five wave advance to the upside, uh, which in the larger scale of things um, is probably the fifth wave of a larger advance that we don't see. Just because something's incepted right here doesn't mean this is the beginning of its Elliott wave pattern. Uh, it just means um, that's when it started. So in my view, this was probably a, a third wave, fourth wave, and then a fifth wave. And then you get this very large pullback that's taken place off the 2008 high. So um, what you can take away from this pullback is that it's not trendy, right? You have this big three wave move here into the 2016 low, <clears throat> and then the overall move itself is looks like an A, a B, and then a C, that super big spike that happened in 2020 uh, that has led to a very nice recovery uh, since then. So on a large time frame, oil looks bullish. I mean, we only have a few patterns to take away here. We have a counter trend down move, a trendy up move, and then another counter trend down move. So there's nothing that suggests that a larger uh, established bear market is going to continue. Obviously, this was a bear market, but it's a counter trend move. And now you're seeing some some strong action to the upside. So let's go ahead and, and zoom in on this uh, action off the 2020 low to get a little bit more information about that. Here's that advance. Uh, the low was recorded in April of 2020. Since then, we have a very nice five wave advance that completed in, in late June. Since then, it's been in a pretty drifty move sideways. So uh, we have trendy upside movement and counter trend downside move movement, which is is bullish. There's no two ways to look about it. That's uh, look at it. That's the formula for higher prices. Now, we believe that the counter trend pullback that started in June is not yet over, and that we should get a C wave down. It may not make it all the way down to the yellow Fibonacci support area here, um, but we would expect it to move back down to June's low at least. Um, so if we get a move below 39.50 at any point, that confirms that we're going to get a larger counter trend pullback on oil. And then we would be looking for that to find a low somewhere below June's low. And then for the next five wave advance to begin. So overall, we're looking for this advance to become a lot bigger. But we do think it's going to give us a larger counter trend pullback. Now, uh, the caveat to that is if it just starts heading higher right away, uh, we have to understand that this counter trend pullback some somehow ended already. Normally, we get a sharp ending move to a counter trend pullback before it ends, uh, but this market's different. I mean, this is, is not your, your normal market, so if it goes straight higher, which a lot of things have, have been apt to do in this market environment, then you run with it. But if you get a move below 39.50, you'll know, expect that larger counter trend pullback, uh, and once it moves below, below June's low, you would look at any kind of strength from there as an indication that the next five wave advance has begun and we'd be looking for a big move i mean this move was huge it moved from six up to about 42 a little bit shy of that that's a huge move we'd be looking for another very large move to the upside after this one completes so we're bullish on oil uh, we see the potential for a larger near-term pullback 
uh, in the meantime. But overall, I think this advance off the 2020 low is going to continue to grow and it's going to be a great buying opportunity. Uh, I was fortunate we got our subscribers in pretty early at trendlizard.com on the oil trade and wrote it up. And then I think right around here is where we exited in anticipation of this larger pullback. We have every intention of being back in oil once it's clear that this counter trend pullback ends because it looks like it has a bright future and is going to head quite a bit higher from there. So, hey, Mark, I hope that's helpful. Thanks again for becoming a member at trendlizard.com. Uh, as you know, uh, this is what we do every day. We take a look at 40 different ATFs and show you where the buying opportunities are based on the Elliott Wave patterns that are playing out. So uh, if anybody else watching this video is interested in Elliott Wave or you want me to analyze uh, some tickers for you, come visit, sign up for our professional level, level service, and uh, I'll be more than happy to take a look at three tickers for you each month. So that's it for me. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.